Now I should like to present our first scientist, Dr. James E. MacDonald, who now holds the position of Senior Physicist, Institute of Atmospheric Physics, and Professor, Department of Meteorology, University of Arizona. Briefly, his educational background includes a BA in Chemistry from the University of Omaha, an MS in Meteorology from the Boston Tech, and a PhD in Physics from Iowa State University. He has been a research physicist at the University of Chicago and has taught Physics at Iowa State University prior to his current position. He is a member of the American Meteorological Society, the American Geophysical Union, the Royal Meteorology Society, and Sigma Psi. I am honored to present our distinguished guest, Dr. McDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to have the chance to talk with you and discuss the results of uh, what I have found in a approximately a 12 months intensive study of this extremely interesting problem of the unidentified uh, flying objects. Uh, I began uh, about uh, last uh, April to uh, take a close look at the problem, having been moderately interested in the problem for some years prior to that. I had been at Wright-Patterson at Project Blue Book, uh, gone through 150 or so cases in their files, examining and looking at them, has uh, been up there three times talking to scientific and military staff at uh, Blue Book. Had a talk with the uh, people in the Air Force, uh, both uh, scientific and uh, military, about other aspects of the problem. Uh, they're around the country uh, discussing with uh, independent groups such as NICAP here in Washington, one of the outstanding independent groups uh, which has done an excellent job over the years at digging into this fascinating problem. I uh, have, uh, uh, on my own uh, uh, book, uh, interviewed dozens of key witnesses in important cases uh, around the country uh, and have examined the hundreds of uh, uh, cases in a good deal of detail. I've gone over at, at Air Force evaluations, Dr. Mensel's analyses of problems, uh, and other uh, evaluations, and it's against that background that I now tell you that the sighting that Mr. Powell uh, discussed, uh, which I was quite interested to hear about, uh, uh, is by no means our representative of the categories of sightings that demand immediate serious scientific attention in this country and all over the world. And that's part of what I'm here to tell you today. This is not a nonsense problem as it has been made out. A lot of you have uh, had fun, I suppose, writing feature stories about little green men and hoaxers and so on. Believe me, that's the wrong part of this problem to take a look at. In the past week, I have spent all of my time discussing with scientific colleagues and with military people in, in Washington, my serious concern, and I'm glad to be able to say to you that uh, this week, I think I have given 10 talks this week uh, in briefings, I'm glad to say to you that scientific and official concern is beginning to change. I've been at the Office of Naval Research, the Naval Research Lab, I've been at the Pentagon twice this week, briefing uh, uh, and the military uh, Air Force and other personnel. I talked to Academy, National Academy people this week, National Science Foundation, and other persons whose influence on the problem, I believe, will quickly show up, but whose affiliations I'm not free to discuss with you. I have to say to you that as a result of a pretty close look at this problem, I think we've all missed the boat. I think we have been misled. I think the problem has been most seriously mishandled uh, officially for 20 years. Uh, the problem has been misrepresented uh, by many uh, interacting factors, including yourselves, including scientists such as myself. Uh, and I have tried to put all this down in a rather long paper that's at the back of the room, and I can't possibly in 20 minutes go over all the details of this, 
But I'll refer to the sections of this 28-page paper uh, as I go along, and I hope that since I know you can't read that now, uh, and I know you can't read it before you leave, I hope that all of you will take back either to read on the airplane or to return uh, with it and give to your scientific editors or aeronautical editors or what have you. Uh, that paper, which goes into considerable detail, develops my point of view as best I can. I think the problem has been superficially and incompetently handled by the Air Force. I have said that uh, in many open discussions. I have said it to Air Force generals this week. I have said it to Air Force generals months ago. And I say it again. The history of the problem, as uh, Major Quintilla uh, briefly indicated, began in 1947. The turning point in the problem, and I, I briefly go over this, uh, because all of these details are spelled out in my paper. Uh, the, the, the pivot point in the history of the UFOs was the Robertson Panel of 1953. Uh, five uh, well-known scientists assembled by the Air Force and CIA to have a look at the problem. There, the security agency concern that led to that group grew out of the heavy wave of reports of 1952, not exceeded even by last year's 1,000 reports, I was startled when I uh, went into Major Quintilla's office uh, and saw five feet of uh, shell being just devoted to the 1952 wave of sightings, so many that security people were concerned with the clogging of intelligence channels. They had uh, five scientists uh, assemble. They spent two days, these five good men, and two days is just not enough to look at this problem. They ruled there was no evidence of hostility, no artifacts of a hostile foreign power, suggested that an educational program be launched. This was never done. It would have been a good thing. The fourth recommendation, uh, which uh, came from strong interaction with CIA representatives in this session, and I have in my report on page uh, six or seven mentioned the names of persons uh, whom uh, uh, CIA representatives, page three, who were there. Um, the um, uh, interaction led to the recommendation, and I quote from the uh, report, I am in the peculiar position of being almost the only one outside of uh, official Air Force channels that has seen this document. Uh, uh, Major Quintanilla uh, gave it to me, and I made extensive notes from it when I asked a subsequent visit for a copy. Uh, things happened, and it has been reclassified by the CIA. Uh, I have made uh, uh, I made no comments about this for several months. Uh, it was fully clear to all the personnel at uh, Blue Book and, and the Foreign Technology Division that I had all these notes. I have uh, no hesitation now to discuss it in full, see my paper for more details. The actual request was for, quote, debunking of the flying saucers, and the reason was to, quote, reduce public interest in flying saucers. This is not a sinister and dark objective. They wanted to get the noise out of the signal uh, that was clogging the intelligence channels, but it was a scientific tragedy that at that time this problem was not turned over in the in face of non-hostility to scientific groups. It was not. It stayed in the Air Force and gradually, as nearly as I can see, it is downgraded to an extremely low-priority project, which uh, Blue Book, when I was there first, involved the major, a sergeant, and a secretary. Now, Major Quintanilla has indicated that the Air Force draws on other sources of uh, expertise, and when we read the press releases from the Pentagon desk, we do indeed get the impression that Air Force expertise, which is not zero by any means, has been used. My examination of the problem strongly indicates that that Air Force expertise has had very little to do with Project Blue Book, and that this is the heart of the problem. For instance, in the case of radar, I talked not very many days ago to the Air Force's best radar propagation man, Dr. David Atlas, who uh, indicated to me, no, he never been brought into any discussions of propagation companies or anything like that in all his years at Air Force Cambridge Research Lab, and I could go on to illustrate examples of that sort. The question of what the UFOs are, are is crucial. When you look at sightings such as uh, that that Mr. Powell and Mr. Clay have uh, talked about, and when you realize, as I now do, but did not 12 months ago, that these are not unrepresentative sightings, that close-range sightings of disks and cigar-shaped objects frequently seen at tens of feet within populous areas are on the increase. Credible observers, multiple witnesses, 
case in Beverly, Massachusetts, where five adults, two of them police officers, were within 20 feet uh, of uh, an object that was right over the middle of the street. Was, uh, in fact, in my paper are 18 cases out of uh, uh, thousands. Uh, and, and this particular case of the last spring, and that sort of thing, and Powell's observation, are representative of the interesting observations. They are not confined to the United States. One finds this going on all over the world. Uh, when you look at this as far as reports, now, I can only vouch for the American reports that I have checked, and those are uh, completely staggering. And when Blue Book tells you and me, as we just heard a moment ago, that there is nothing in the unidentified objects that defies present-day explanation in terms of science and technology, that's balderdash. <laughs> that is endless utter rock. <laughs> kind of a dome-shaped object uh, that Mr. Powell saw. Well, if it was the only one you've ever heard of, you'd forget about it. But look at the unidentified cases. Uh, Exeter, Damon, Texas, uh, Fort Huron, Michigan. Uh, look at the sightings uh, last, uh, only a couple of months ago in Davis, uh, California. Look at these cases uh, that uh, simply uh, fit no conventional, no scientific, no known explanation. Something is going on here of the greatest scientific interest that has been shoved under a rug ridiculed and laughed out of court. You can help ridicule us or feature writers. It's easy to write a funny story. Once the Air Force tells you there's nothing to it, what's more logical than to say uh, people see things? There are a lot of nuts around the country. And that has led to the, the, the not effect that very few of these are reported. For example, Mr. Powell's report never got on the wires. He called after a day's deliberation, uh, uh, he told me, uh, the Naval Air Station at Willow Grove, and they weren't very interested in go any further with this. And the number of people who have uh, been hurt, inventor citizens who have been hurt by Air Force uh, callous uh, rejection and discrediting, saying they saw uh, twinkling stars and so on, is a very large number that I have uh, had first-hand contact with. And I will dis discredit as a citizen at all this kind of, if there were some reason for it, if there were a national security reason, but it's just incompetence in operation. And <laughs> I've given that very careful thought for a number of reasons. Uh, the uh, group at night after in Washington uh, has had much more contact with this problem than either the Air Force or I. And they have again and again encountered cases where it looked to them as if there must be some really high-level conspiracy. People have suggested maybe Lubick is only a front organization and doesn't know that it's only a front organization. <laughs> well, I can't begin to tell you the forces that I have checked on this, but I do not think it's a grand cover-up. It is a grand follow-up. A follow-up of incredible proportions, unprecedented in my experience. Uh, there have been scientists who have looked at the problem, and uh, not very many. Dr. Mansell is one. And on uh, pages 5 to 7, or 7 to 11 uh, of uh, my paper, uh, I make uh, illustrative comments on my strong disagreement with the basis of his arguments. I cannot agree with the optical, physical, astronomical principles that uh, uh, argumentation that he uses in there, and that's spelled out so clearly on pages 7 to 11 that I will not uh, elaborate that in detail. I do not believe they represent scientifically sound analyses, and you can see uh, examples uh, in the uh, paper. Uh, another person who has recently looked at the problem is uh, Philip Class, who has thought perhaps these are plasma phenomena. Uh, that's a reasonable thing to have a look at, and I've had a look at it. Uh, I can agree with Philip Class that uh, any substantial portion of the cases can be accounted for in corona or ball lightning terms, and I make a few comments about that uh, on the same pages. Uh, recombination times, lifetimes of uh, uh, plasmas. Uh, in in the, the best labs in the country, it's uh, the biggest problem with fusion research. You get uh, lifetimes of more than seconds. But uh, how did Mr. Powell see this plasma uh, uh, coming along at him uh, from uh, ahead?
ahead and uh, watch it for tens of seconds. How did uh, uh, two California Highway Patrolmen uh, at uh, Red Rock, uh, uh, California, uh, stand uh, about 150, 200 feet uh, from a 100 foot long object that uh, had great big white blinking lights on it uh, that maneuvered up and down and uh, led them a chase of about 70 minutes? How did the Portage County <laughs> Sheriff's deputies of last spring uh, follow for uh, an hour and a half a, a plasma or a twinkling star or, as Major Quintanilla said, uh, a combination of Echo and Venus? Uh, an explanation that is utterly absurd, and it still stands as an official explanation. Congressman Stanton has been told the reinvestigation confirms that. That, too, is utter rot. And I tell you that uh, this sort of thing has to stop, and you editors are in an excellent position to help uh, stop this by pressing for what I am afraid at this juncture may be the only way to escalate serious scientific concern, and that is to ask for a full and fair congressional inquiry into the past 20 years of mishandling of this extremely important problem. Now, a scientist doesn't usually like to pursue these kind of uh, routes. I don't. Uh, you often get uh, not only less than you hoped, you get into, uh, you, you, you move scientific progress, but sometimes you don't. We must have a hearing that is not like the one last spring, which was called by Congressman Ford as a result of constituents' concern over Air Force handling of the Michigan uh, cases, which were explained in terms of swamp gas. No single explanation is brought to the Air Force for ridicule. I discussed that case in my paper, too. That, too, is nonsense. And this still stands the explanation. This is an explanation that came directly from Dr. Heineck, and uh, Mitch Quintanella has assured me that it's he, not him, that I must have my discussions with, and I have, but the explanation has not been retracted. Uh, when uh, Ford got an investigation, who did it? Armed Services Committee. Who testified? Three Air Force related people, period. That we can have. We must have what uh, NICAM, for example, has been pre uh, pleading for for years. Uh, they, uh, they, by the way, uh, there are in the back of the, of the room a couple of other papers that I left. And if you want to get the best uh, source of information about the whole UFO problem, the single best source, uh, the leading reference on the back of those papers is a reference to a publication that I have called the UFO Evidence. In that, it comes to mind the moment, because in that is a long summary of their unsuccessful attempts to persuade congressmen, they almost had it several times, to persuade congressmen to launch an investigation, and this, I'm afraid, is needed because we scientists have been assured so long there's nothing to it, that I have found out, I've gone around the country, I suppose I've uh, uh, I've talked to uh, 15 the scientific groups, Rand, University of Washington, uh, colleagues in the American Meteorological Society, and over and over again I, I encounter the conviction that they can't be anything to this. The Air Force has investigated for years and years and shown there's not, not a lot of evidence, the sort of phraseology you heard a moment ago. Uh, this even shows up abroad. Uh, Jacques Vallée, a French uh, investigator of UFOs who's now in this country, has written two fairly good books. Uh, answered my question about why doesn't the French government, for example, do something? He said, when we go to the French government, they say the Air Force, the United States Air Force has been spending a lot of money for many years on this and have shown there's nothing to it. Why should we spend French money? And so this, this image of expertise that has been, been spread abroad, which has behind it zero, is uh, holding this problem uh, in, uh, in a limbo and that it must be blasted out. And I don't think that the scientists, though I saw some progress this week, progress of an entirely different sort, and I'm, I'm proud of it, I don't think we're really going to get the, the serious concern among many top top scientists. We're going to need a scientist much better than myself to look at this problem. This has to go to the top caliber scientists all over the world because something is involved here that is a concern uh, to all of us and is not a simple problem. I mean, what do you want to do? Obviously, how, how am I going to explain a 30, 40, 50 foot disc that goes by and experienced 18,000 hours, Powell has, I found. Uh, and he sees this as just like a Cadillac, uh, tens of yards away. Uh, that's going to take really good scientists, and I'm afraid, in fact, that even the best are going to be very bewildered when they examine, as I, for example, have examined the astounding volume of evidence 
that exists on this problem that has been generally put under the rug. Wire editors know it's a lot of nonsense. If something happens out in Sox Center, uh, maybe the Sox Center Gazette doesn't even report it, but if it does, the wire editor, I'm sure, uh, is, is disinclined to report it. And so the discrepancy between what you as editors suspect is the nature of the problem and what you see in just looking at clipping service coverage, where you get all the Sox Center Gazette reports, is it's incredible. I couldn't believe it when I first saw months ago, uh, last spring, uh, NICAP uh, clipping uh, service coverage on this problem. Uh, it, I, I thought I knew something about the problem, but the number of, of incidents that are Shemokin, in Pennsylvania, or uh, Custer, Washington, what have you, that I've never heard of, and nobody else hears of. If you read the New York Times in your own paper, you won't have heard of them because we have collectively helped the Air Force. Uh, just kind of forget about this somewhat uncomfortable problem, and you have helped, and yet the evidence is uh, simply, simply astounding. Well, I uh, much prefer to talk about the, uh, the purely uh, scientific aspects of, uh, of some of these explanations. Uh, I have no uh, startling scientific uh, illumination uh, of the problem. It's baffling to me. Uh, nothing in my scientific education prepares me to give you a pat explanation of what is going on here. But I am saying to scientific colleagues, on the basis of this examination of many cases, which are not hoaxes uh, and fabrications in total. There are hoaxes, there are misinterpreted phenomena, there are all these things. They are not advanced test vehicles, believe me. No, no Air Force test vehicle is going to uh, go for five miles behind a little gas truck in Oklahoma, as uh, Anderson down there, Temple was telling me. Uh, this, this sort of thing, landing in the middle of cities, and uh, uh, no American test vehicle is going to be tested in uh, Brazil or uh, New Zealand, and no Russian test vehicle is going to be tested in uh, the United States or uh, England. Uh, these are, uh, there's every reason to believe that the phenomenon is global. They're not advanced test vehicles. They're not uh, hallucinations. I've uh, had three sessions with uh, uh, psychologists uh, to try to get at, uh, is there anything in your clinical experience that would match this? The answer is no. It certainly doesn't sound like anything psychological. And after all, uh, when you have uh, uh, some cases of dozens of witnesses, and there are such, uh, frequently radar sightings, so if they involve the Air Force, those are disclaimed and blamed on weather electronic malfunctions and so on, and uh, this sort of thing. And is there blamed in that way after 1953? If you want to get all the Air Force radar sightings, you go back before the CIA requested the debunking policy and Air Force Regulation 200-2, all of which is discussed in, in my paper, by the way, uh, in, with, uh, uh, with, with more detail than I can go into here. Well, what can be done? The Colorado program is a beginning, but I am uneasy about the Colorado program. Uh, there is not nearly enough scientific talent on that program. I've said that quite openly without uh, uh, intending to car uh, to many people in Washington, and, uh, and uh, uh, this, this must be beefed up immediately. A third of a million dollars is, is to, uh, I guess our book wall said, what about a horrible waste of taxpayers' money? That's not true. <laughs> the book wall is in the room. Uh, what we need is much more attention to this problem. That unfortunately requires money, but it requires people, and that's what's short on Colorado. They have not taken the problem on trade seriously enough to muster the scientific challenge to do justice to that, and we need immediate escalation of the problem. Congressional inquiry, if you can press for it, uh, will perhaps do the trick. I also will send the problem awry, and I don't uh, uh, have great confidence in that being the, the uh, greatest solution, and I will continue to try at one scientist to pursue it in other ways. The problem belongs in a science-oriented agency, not the military, and by their own uh, statement, with which I agree, there is no clear-cut evidence of hostility. Let's get it into a scientific agency. Amusingly, all my efforts to, to uh, interest NASA in this uh, give me the feeling that they think it's nonsense, too. I think they've been hoodwinked and sort of uh, unintentionally brainwashed for years and years. And all this is not as a result of any high-level conspiracy. It's just it's a follow-up. But a follow-up of, of really, really incredible uh, proportions. We, we, we must 
We must launch a new level of investigation, and to close on that point, there are very specific things. Radar is already deployed, but the trouble is it's compromised by uh, present regulations. There are many radar sightings. Uh, this would be an immediate objective source of information that could be put into uh, scientific terms and be very useful. There are a large number of electromagnetic effects known in the, in the, in the uh, evidence, uh, car stopping cases. A uh, level in Texas of 1957, a fascinating case, nine different vehicles stopped. This is going on all the time. Uh, Nike must have 150 examples of this. There is going on in Australia, England, and so on. Uh, associated with this are apparently interference effects, radio and TV, uh, magnetometers, map compasses, a lot of electromagnetic effects. Well, we are collectively very good, not myself. So science knows a lot about electromagnetic sensing devices. Many things could be done quickly if only the thing were taken the were taken seriously. <laughs> airlines, uh, there are many uh, uh, airline uh, uh, reports in the, in the old evidence, but once the Air Force began to discredit, and they have, just in some cases, unfortunately, uh, discredited pilots, uh, that uh, uh, source of information has pretty much been, uh, dried up. Uh, that uh, can be changed. Mobile teams need to be uh, prepared to get out into the field in a hurry uh, with, uh, with, with a lot of gear, and this can be done. Uh, I discussed this uh, uh, in the Pentagon last week with the people who know a great deal more about that sort of thing. The whole question of the pre-1947 sightings, which I can't begin even to uh, sketch, must be looked at by historical scholars as well as students of the uh, uh, history of technology to examine the interesting question of whether sightings that appear to constitute a continuum at low levels, running back to the turn of the century at least, are uh, are the same phenomenon. My camp is coming out the volume in a few months uh, that uh, represents a, a good compilation of evidence. It needs historical sophistication uh, to uh, assess it. That's a very important thing to do because the whole nature of the problem is quite different if it is the case, and I lean in this direction, lean in this direction, that aside from the marked increase beginning in 1947, there appears to be the same phenomenon of craft-like, machine-like objects operating in our environment uh, for tens of years. All the heart of the problem is the ridicule that and you're sitting on it. You're sitting on it in a way that, that uh, is very important. Get off the lid. That is, get your wire service people to take it seriously. Look at the problem yourself. Examine it for yourself. And get off that lid, because that's a big part of the problem now. You don't know whether changes in the frequency of sightings is a real change, or just because you have given it serious credence in your area, and so people come out to, with reports that they wouldn't otherwise have told a soul about. You're on the lid. Get off it. Ask for congressional investigation. Read in this report the 18 or 20 editorial comments that were assembled. See that some of your colleagues have already pressed for this, uh, uh, pressed but too faintly in the past. And have a look for yourself at the evidence, and you will find an astounding picture of enormous interest that has been mishandled and misrepresented for far too long. Thank you.